I want to talk about the one thing that I undoubtedly know that would break Miranda's allegiance to Cecilia Stain. It would definitely and undoubtedly break complete loyalty and everything regarding the relationship between Cecilia Stain and Miranda if Miranda knew the truth behind this lie. And if Miranda knew the truth, she would pull away from Cecilia so fast and she would most definitely have exposed Cecilia. But during the investigation and during the trial, I brought up this lie or the truth of this lie to the investigators a few times and I guess they decided that it wasn't important for Miranda to know this truth not that they stopped her from knowing it but they I don't as far as I know they didn't go out of their way for her to know this truth and I think it's simply because by that point Miranda had already confessed to killing people she had already sentenced herself so any other extra information was basically just drawing out the trial to become longer. So it was unnecessary. But when I had written the letter to Marcel, I had written the same letter to Marinda. And in that letter was the truth of this specific lie. And I can definitely say that when Marcel read about this truth, and when I gave myself evidence to back up what I was telling her, I know that it helped Marcel realize the truth about all Cecilia's lies, not just the one. And I know that it also helped Marcel in wanting to confess. I still persisted in Miranda getting the letter so that she could at least know the truth. Because... For as long as I had known her, and even all these years afterwards, Miranda still held on to this lie. And even though I know that if Miranda ever had to know the truth behind it, it would completely break her. It would devastate her. It, I don't think there would be anything left of her. I can say this because I know of the the extreme importance or the extreme obsession rather that Miranda had over this topic, over this lie. And I know of the extreme brainwashing and control that Cecilia had over Miranda, all because of this lie. This lie, as far as I'm concerned, was the foundation for Miranda being loyal to Cecilia. It was the foundation for basically everything regarding Cecilia and all these years later Miranda still carried it with her very strongly. I know when I talk about the lie in a few minutes I know to some people it won't make sense why someone would hold on to this kind of lie and let it mold their lives or let it mold their their relationships or trust or anything uh, to anybody else but we have to remember that each person is different each person has a different personality and with Miranda Miranda had an extreme obsession problem and I think that's also what made it far worse if Miranda wasn't so obsessive, and I'm talking about obsessive to the extreme, then I don't think this would have played such a, a huge uh, role uh, in Miranda's life, in Miranda's allegiance to Cecilia, in quite a few things, actually. But again, while I relate this, just please bear in mind, Miranda is an extremely obsessive person. And everyone is different. So even if you don't understand the, even if you don't understand how someone would take this lie as the truth and let it mold their lives, everyone's different. 
this is just simply Miranda. This, and I, sadly, I saw it firsthand as well, um, too many times. But I suppose let me let me go back to the beginning of when this lie started. Now, early into Miranda meeting Cecilia and the others in the group, there was a day when I was at home and. Cecilia sent me a text message asking for me to find several photos of good-looking men that were random nobodies. Uh, she told me to search the internet and I, I asked her why. And all she replied was, she will explain it to me the next time she sees me. The photos that I had to find, it was emphasized that these men had to be really good-looking and they could not be recognizable. So it didn't matter where I had found these pictures from, just as long as nobody would instantly recognize who these people were or who these men were. So after much searching uh, with no clue as to why I was doing this, I eventually sent Cecilia two photos of two good-looking, unrecognizable men. And then the following time that I saw Cecilia, this whole scenario with the photos was forgotten. Just simply because with Cecilia there was always a dramatic scenario going on, to some extreme or, or the other. So uh, something like finding photos on the internet was not exactly a top priority to be brought up in conversation because something else that was drastic like trying to save her life or something of that kind of sort that was supposedly going on was taking up your time uh, it was preoccupying your mind but I think it was about a week or two afterwards where I was with Cecilia and she received a, a text message from Miranda and Cecilia burst out laughing now, when Cecilia received the message, I had no idea what was going on. I didn't even know the message was from Miranda. So I just simply asked her why she's laughing, because the laugh was also rather strange. It was this very... Uh, I don't even know how to explain it. I suppose for a, a lack of words in describing the type of laugh, uh, let me just say, whenever Cecilia used to talk about Miranda to me, she would always say things like, Miranda's so dumb, I can't believe that, you know, she believes this nonsense. Miranda's so ridiculous, Miranda is this and that. It was always these, these type of statements. So, in this scenario with this specific laugh, Cecilia was laughing at how dumb Miranda was for believing some nonsense some really bizarre, random nonsense that Cecilia had fed to Miranda. So you can only imagine the laugh. And it came with a very, very uh, evil smile at the end of it as well. And also a very satisfying uh, schmirk, if you want to put it that way. And then I asked Cecilia what you know, what was basically going on. And uh, Cecilia said to me that she had sent Miranda one of the photos of the men. And she told Miranda that one of these men was from the occult who was trying to escape. And when he tried to astral to Cecilia... Uh, to ask her for help, he had seen Miranda and he had fallen hopelessly in love with her. And he had apparently been following Miranda around for weeks on end because he was hopelessly in love with her. And then, in addition to that, Cecilia said that she had also told Miranda that once this man had finally managed to escape from the occult, he wanted to date Miranda and then marry her and live the rest of his life with her. Now, when Cecilia told me this, I was in utter shock and disbelief. 
why would you go and tell someone something like this? First of all, this is a, a random person from the internet. Um, this man is not following Mirinda. This man doesn't even know Mirinda exists. Why would you lead someone on with this lie? Um, and I, I don't even have words for it. It is just, it's twisted. But Mirinda became so obsessed with this man. And all she had was this photo. And then Cecilia eventually got a cell phone with another number. And she pretended to be this man. This man's name was supposedly John. And throughout the time period that I knew Mirinda and Cecilia, he was always referred to as Mirinda's John. Because there were also a few Johns um, in the mix of all the discussions uh, throughout the events with Cecilia. And whenever I saw Mirinda, not that I saw her often, she would, she was glowing. She was basically on top of the world. And all she could do was talk about John, about the messages that John sent her, about the things that he would say. She was swooning. She was falling in love with, <laughs> sadly, a person that never existed. Well, he does exist, obviously, but with a person who, a person whose story was not legitimate. Uh, who a person who was not following her around was not trying to escape from the occult was not in love with her everything was just made up all just for Cecilia's own benefit just for her amusement and sadly because of Marinda's obsessive qualities she went overboard in her dedication to this John. I don't even know how to explain it. It was actually quite scary. She was, she lived and breathed John. It was weird. It was ridiculous. And only after I had left Cecilia did I realize that through the fake people that Cecilia had created, that she would control each of us. Now, for the people who didn't exist but did contact me, I had never seen photos of them. Um, I had never partaken of finding photos for anybody else to make up any other person with a background story that doesn't exist. This was, John was the first and only time. But through these fake people, Cecilia would control or try to control our actions uh, through scare tactics, through various means. So with John, that's how Cecilia would mostly control Mirinda. You know, simple thing like John says this or John needs that. I mean, there was even a scenario where John was in fear for his life. So X, Y, Z needs to happen. And because of Mirinda's obsessive, uh, or her obsession over John, Mirinda wouldn't hesitate in jumping to do whatever, just purely because she was in love with, well, basically this photo. And this uh, person who she was receiving messages from that didn't exist, and actually, sadly, was just Cecilia. Unlike all the other made-up people that Cecilia had, John came with a bit of a twist, though. There was one day, and this wasn't long after John had uh, supposedly, technically, I don't know what the right word is, but come into the picture. Uh, Mirinda was at Cecilia's house, and I was there too. It was just the three of us. And Miranda had done something to make Cecilia cross. So, as always, she wanted to seek revenge. She wanted to get back at Miranda somehow. So, 
she decided to kill off John. <laughs> I'll never forget this day. Um, I was horrified and terrified. Um, it, I think it's one of the, the days that have stuck with me for all these years later. Those memories. Um, well, let me, let me explain. So we were in Cecilia's room and Cecilia pretends to get a text message. And then she portrays this look of shock and horror and sadness. Miranda immediately asks what's wrong. And Cecilia says to her that John was on a flight to somewhere and the plane crashed and John died. I don't think I've ever seen someone fall apart as fast as I had seen Miranda fall apart. She literally, and I mean literally, fell to the ground. Her feet and her legs caved in. She was sobbing hopelessly. Um, and then she started hyperventilating. She was having a major panic attack. Cecilia and I rushed her to her feet and got her to my car. And I think at some point Cecilia's husband had come home because I recall him trying to help Miranda into the back seat of the car as well. And I, I sat in the driver's seat with Cecilia next to me. And I looked at her in complete confusion and disbelief, shock and horror and so many things because how do you explain this scenario? Um, how do you explain, uh, you know, watching someone destroy someone else when you know it's all a lie? And while Cecilia's husband was trying to help Miranda into the car, I said to Cecilia, actually I pleaded with Cecilia and a couple of times I pleaded with her to tell Miranda the truth, to tell her that John doesn't actually exist, so there's n there was never a death. And then at the very least, just tell her that somehow just reverse it, John's still alive. I mean, seeing as she can be the maker and breaker of this apparent guy's fate, I just desperately needed her to undo what was happening to Miranda. I mean, before Cecilia had decided to kill off John, she did tell me that she was eventually going to tell Miranda the truth, that John never existed. Because I, I told her, I mean, why? Well, I asked her, you know, why are you lying to Miranda about this guy? And she just casually replied, she will eventually tell Miranda the truth. She just wants to have some fun with it for now. Um, but this is how. I guess she broke the truth to Miranda, if you want to put it that way, in a very strange, bizarrely twisted way. She decided to kill off John. And when I begged and pleaded with Cecilia to tell Miranda at that point that John, this whole story about John is not true. John doesn't exist. Um, everything that she was told was a lie. Or at the very least you know, make John come back to life somehow. And uh, I'll never forget the look in Cecilia's eyes. It was, uh, I don't even know how to explain it, but it was a why are you question, questioning me type of look. Like, don't you even dare. And I recall her saying to me, or I actually recall her warning me, not to say a word to Miranda. I was frozen in fear with that warning. Do not dare tell Miranda the truth because you will regret it. And in that same moment of being completely fearful of that statement, there's still the panic and the rush of having to get Miranda to uh, Medicross. 
And while I was driving to Medicross, I can't explain the thoughts that were going through my mind, the confusion, the, the fear, um, so many things. And once we got to Medicross, Cecilia took Miranda inside so that the doctors could assist her, while Cecilia told me to wait outside. She didn't want me near Miranda, just in case I say something, because I was too close to actually saying something. Miranda's life or livelihood was in the balance of life and death, basically. I mean, she was critical. She she was on the verge of not breathing. I can't tell you how many times Miranda gasped for air while she was having this panic attack. I was... I was petrified. I so desperately wanted to tell Miranda the truth. So Cecilia wouldn't let me near Miranda, just in case I said something. And so I had to wait outside. And I know I waited for quite a while. And the report came back that the doctors had to give Miranda something strong to calm her down. Because she almost had a a stroke. Uh, her blood pressure and everything had escalated dramatically. After we went back to Cecilia's place, Cecilia told me to go home. I didn't even have a five-second gap to be alone with Miranda to say anything. But also Miranda was fairly sedated or fairly out of it, should I say, from what the doctors had given her. Now... Even though this John had apparently been killed off, with Miranda's obsessive qualities and her obsession over John, John still basically carried on living in Miranda's mind. It went to the point where, even when Miranda moved houses, Miranda had a shrine, an entire shrine, built just to John. Um, At one point I was even sent photos of it. It was honestly ridiculous. It was a full proper shrine. I I was speechless. Um, (laughs) Yeah, a full on proper shrine, full table and all sorts of objects and his photo that was made into this huge poster. Um, that was on top of the shrine. No one was allowed near near it. No one was allowed to touch it. It was... He was still Miranda's John. All these years later, he was still the love of her life. And sadly, even though Cecilia had killed off John, Cecilia still decided to feed Miranda more nonsense regarding John. I don't know all the lies that followed afterwards because... Well, I simply think I became a bit of a risk for Cecilia because she knew how badly I wanted to tell Miranda the truth. So telling me or letting me know anything more would have just increased the risk. And even after I had left Cecilia, all these years later, I mean over a decade later, Miranda still had the shrine. Miranda still talked about John um, and Cecilia still fed her more nonsense lies about John. Uh, And in doing this, Cecilia would still control Miranda. Like I said, Miranda lived and breathed everything revolving around John. And also because Cecilia was the only connection or physical connection that Miranda actually had to this John, Miranda had an even stronger allegiance or an even stronger dedication and loyalty to Cecilia because she was so obsessive over John so she would then grasp hold of Cecilia even more. It was the closest she had to John. It was the closest she had, it was the closest tangible thing that she had to her John. I'm not sure if this would make sense to a lot of people 
on how someone could be this way um, with regards to Marinda. But this is sadly how Marinda is. I can tell you even now, still in prison, Marinda is still talking about John. That's just how sad it is, but that's just how strong the lie and the deception is as well. And in what I had witnessed when Marinda broke down when John had supposedly died, I know that if Marinda had to find out the full truth, it would finish her. Um, like I said, I will never forget the day that Marinda broke down. I had recalled it so often after I had left Cecilia. And I so badly wanted to tell Marinda the truth. And I know when I had written that letter to Marcel and to Marinda, it was the first thing I had written. Uh, and I included photos. I included so many photos of this man. He was a model that was used for various things. Um, his photos were used for novels and even games. Uh, fantasy role-playing games to be specific I found so many photos of him and I included them all in the letter to show you know this man still actually is alive this man is not from the occult you were fed a lie just like Cecilia had, Cecilia had lied about all these other people obviously other than Lizette and Andrea but Sadly, I don't think Marinda's ever going to know the truth. I still think she does deserve to know the truth. But I don't think she'll ever know the truth. And unfortunately, then I think that's the one thing and the main thing that's going to keep her loyal to Cecilia. I mean, you must admit, Marinda's loyalty to Cecilia is unnatural. It's disturbing. Um, but, I mean, in just even trying to grasp her loyalty to Cecilia, you can only imagine how obsessed she is over John, even all these years later. And she is more obsessed over John than she is over Cecilia. And I guess that's just her personality trait. And unfortunately, Cecilia used that against her. I know there were some points during the investigation where I considered and I even suggested to the investigators that I go to the prison, uh, well, a holding prison, and I go see Miranda herself. Now, in all honesty, I didn't see that going too well. Um, it was just a hopeless attempt at trying to get Miranda to see the truth. Even if it was just an attempt at trying to give her the evidence. Because I know with all the nonsense that Cecilia had fed Miranda in general, and more than likely, obviously, about me as well, Miranda wouldn't have taken my word at anything. So I would have brought her evidence. And even if I hadn't have said a word to Miranda, I just wanted to give her the letter. I just wanted her to see the truth. I wanted her to break off her loyalty to Cecilia. And that was even before Miranda had confessed to anything. And even after she confessed, uh, I, still, I still wanted to give her the letter, give her the evidence. But for my safety's sake, I was never allowed. I was never allowed to go see any of uh, anyone at the prison. But um, I know I tried. Uh, I persisted through the various means, the advocates, the investigators, and so on. And unfortunately, only Marcel will eventually. I think it was possibly after two years of trying that Marcel eventually got the letter. I am I am very glad that Marcel got the letter, and I'm glad that... Marcel finally saw the truth and spoke up. But I also still wish that Marinda could know the truth. 
and I can only begin to imagine the chaos that er that would erupt in the prison if Marinda had to find out now. I mean, she's sentenced for so many lifetimes, and she's confessed for so much and put her life on the line for Cecilia, all based on a foundation of a lie, uh, which was obviously also piled on with other lies. But I can also only imagine how much more Marinda would expose of Cecilia, about Cecilia, if she had to know this truth. And um, <laughs> I think even though the vast majority of us are shocked at what has come out from the trial and what even Marinda confessed, I mean, I'm still dumbfounded at her confessing that she enjoyed killing people that my mind ca uh, cannot fathom. But how much more would she confess? How much more is there still that has been left unsaid that Marinda would come out with once she knew the truth? Um, it might not matter because this group has already been sentenced. But then again, it might also matter. We don't know what secrets Marinda is hiding or the rest of the group for that matter. But again, like I've said a few times now, I know a lot of people will not understand how this one lie would form the foundation for the loyalty or a friendship or an allegiance to another person. I know people will not understand how someone can become so obsessed and mold their lives around, well, technically a photograph and a story. But sadly, I was there. Um, I saw it firsthand. And I know, I know the extreme obsession that Marinda has in general and more so over John. It's extremely disturbing. But I also know the extreme brainwashing and the extreme control that Cecilia had over Marinda because of this lie. And even though it won't make sense to a lot of people how this could possibly work, sadly, this is a fact. Um, it is a fact. And if Marinda had to know the truth, if Marinda had known the truth so long ago, I can tell you now she would never have been part of this group. Uh, she would never have stayed, uh, even knowing Cecilia. But this lie was the foundation for so many other lies and even <laughs> far worse things afterwards. I just, I hope in me trying to explain this, it does make some kind of sense at least.